welcome thanks for clicking so this is what people have to say about the hijab about women wearing hijab are uh, hijabs empowering and this set of people are going to be discussing it let's check that out. yeah i mean you know people have to understand that muslims come from across the globe in so many different cultures and we just have one perception when we see some sort of extremism or some sort of, uh, you know, uh, isolated incident, and we sort of brush that on every single Muslim person but out why there. why are you wearing it? I wear it because it is, you know, part of my faith, and it is part of my identity. So what's it saying about your faith? It's... I just need to get to the crux of... You see, I remember, as a, as a Roman Catholic, I remember in the 60s, women covered their heads up with black scarves every time they entered the church. Yes, it still happens in a lot of places like Italy and yeah, places yeah. like Spain. So even when I visit as well, you know, a lot of women will cover up when they enter the actual okay, sort so, of churches. So, so it's a sign of respect. Who are you covering up for? It's for myself and for my creator. So I feel that at the end of the day that I feel kind of, you know, um, feeling modest and protected and at the same time it's showing that you know people are looking at me for different reasons as well and they're listening to me for different reasons and as much as people may say it's oppressive it may be shown oppressiveness in some areas and some parts of the world but Muslims are you know vast across the globe and again we have Muslims from Indonesia and Malaysia and Brunei and all of these places and there's absolutely nothing wrong with it and we have so many Muslims I mean non-Muslims converting and coming to Islam as well mm. out of their own choice, especially in the But I'm not the sure West. the benefit, I'll shut up after this, I'm not sure the benefit of, if I'm not supposed to look at you, I am looking at you and I don't wish to be offensive or anything. You're, you're a mean. very attractive woman. Am I not supposed to see you as an attractive woman? That is you because I think, you know, attractiveness is relative at the end of the day. You know, so you might find it, someone else may not. I'm sure a lot of people watching me be like, what is she wearing? What is she doing? She's in an impressive place and she shouldn't be, you know, imposing it over here. But you go to Spain, you get a lot of Britons over there that never change, never integrate, never even learn the language. So wherever we go, we always bring our own to a certain extent and we keep it, but we still integrate. And there's a lot of intellectual Muslims choosing on their own like myself. And nobody in my family actually wears it except for me and my sister. And we chose individually. Yeah, well, listen, Khadija, you know, I suppose from a liberal perspective in a Western country where women are choosing to use it and they're able to eloquently argue the case for it about modesty and a statement of faith, fair enough. But I suppose the, case, the point is that in many countries of the world women are told they have to wear it and they are told they have to wear it because they're in some way sexual and and and, and wrong and immoral just by being a woman is that your objection to it? the thing is that we are not talking about individuals here who claim to choose to wear it we're talking about an attire that comes with an ideology and that ideology looks down on women that ideology is inherent inherently misogynistic when we talk about uh, they are told to wear no they are not told to wear they are forced to wear they are coerced into wearing it and uh, when we talk about the oh. women who are who claim to choose to wear it they are doing it here in the western society where we have freedoms liberties under the secular uh, you know laws of, of the western countries here we don't have religion in power but where we have religion in power we see that the religious authorities they use Use this attire as a tool to oppress women and that is why it's not about some women it's not about some places it's Muslim majority countries around the world millions of women are forced to wear it so it is very disingenuous to say that there are some women who are forced to wear it we can see that just a couple of days ago we just marked the anniversary the death anniversary of Masa Amini what happened to her she was wearing improper hijab what happened okay this was uh, this happened in Iran let's talk about the UK what happened to Benaz? Benaz, she refused to comply with this orthodox and cultish uh, lifestyle. She refused to wear hijab. She refused to comply with the... But these are isolated the... incidents, and I think that, no. again, it does not represent everyone and everywhere. As much as you say that, you know, that happens, and that's not part of faith, mm. that's an ideology, as you say. And those are interpretations that most even Muslims don't actually approve of as well. It's just that we don't have our voice to actually say it out loud. So at the end of the day, the mainstream media will actually, you know, pick and choose what they want 
and that's why everybody has no, this version. No, you can say that this is not I'm the not, interpretation I'm, of religion, but it is a misogynistic. If they are using it in my name, if they're using it in my name and my, my faith, my point. then it's different. No, it's, it is a misogynistic attire. It is, there is a religious, uh, uh, you can say, belief behind this attire that women are supposed to cover themselves. I, I believe that it is nowhere mentioned in the core beliefs of Islam. It is not mentioned in the Quran, even the khimr that is mentioned in the Quran. It is not hijab. It so is just a piece of cloth here that women wear. What do you make anyway? then of this um, statue? Is it divisive? It's, is it? it's disgraceful. It's disgraceful. I would say, uh, I was talking about Benaz. She refused to comply with these orthodoxical beliefs and she was brutally murdered. And then we talk about another girl who was uh, murdered by her own family members in Canada. She refused to wear hijab. I know that these are uh, these appear to be isolated cases. Why? Because these women, they suffer in silence who refuse to comply. But what about and they the make the headlines when only when they are tortured. And they are Sorry, being oppressed. Let me, let me compare they, are being oppressed. they only make the people they only in make headlines when they are tortured. No. Okay. Or in worst cases, killed. Only then they I make headlines that, and they and come I'm on not the front pages of at the, the end of newspaper. The day, at the end of the day, when there are people who are choosing one extreme to another, is the but it's the same as oppression on either side. At the end of the day, we're not ping pongs, you know, women to say, you know, wear it or don't wear it. We should be given that choice either way. So if you are in a secular country or even in Britain, we're not secular here. We have even King Charles is a fan and an ambassador for all faith because we can live quite healthily and happily What about in those women who don't comply with the faith? Who, what about those women who don't want to wear it? There's no Where compulsion would they go? in religion. And they suffer There's in no silence. Compulsion. They suffer in silence. Yeah, I'm from, again, I was born and raised in a very conservative Muslim household. I know as a child I didn't well, have any choice. My father, he tried, to make me, he tried to make me wear hijab. My mother, she stood for me. She said to my father, she confronted him and said to her, I didn't give birth to a slave. My girls Wearing would never wear... Wearing not being Excuse me, just let me... Just no, let it's me, not just being let me My mother said, my, mother, my kids, will, my girls will not wear hijab. And it's because of her, mm -hmm. I, was, I was free. I wouldn't wear it. Otherwise, my father would have You're this on me just because for the rest of my yourself. life. So I know the little girls, they have no choice. They, ha they, they are okay. made to wear it in the name of modesty, in the ma ma name of uh, cultural no, norms. And they reasons. carry this burden I mean, all their reasons. lives. Uh, just to, to Fahim, a final point to you. I mean, you know, you could look at a, a Catholic nun, for example, and yeah. the outfit's not that different. You could make exactly. the case, couldn't you, that it's not the hijab in itself. It's the human twisting or misinterpretation of something that is at fault here. And actually, if a woman wants to wear something as a religious exactly. symbol, then there shouldn't be anything wrong with that in and of itself. Absolutely. And if one, you know, if there is people that are doing certain things, they should be accountable for it. But don't brush us all under the same sort of banner to think that, you know, it's an oppression, it's a slavery, all of that. Because there are millions of women who choose, whether it's in the West or even in the East, and I've travelled widely I, to actually I know this. I just want to say one thing. One that thing. Whenever Whenever something comes from religion, it is always sugar-coated or always brushed no, it's aside. Not. It is we need to understand very, one very thing, bad that if we don't that allow any misogynistic belief in the society mm -hmm. and we condemn it unequivocally, mm -hmm. we need to do the same it's, when it comes yeah. from the religious discourse. Yes, but it does and exist of course, outside of religion as well. Um, sure. We have to leave it there. Wow. Guys. This is a whole lot, guys. This is a whole lot. That lady called Khadija. I was surprised when she said some people are being forced to wear the hijab. They are like slaves, this and that. No, no. She doesn't have to generalize it. You know, wearing a hijab is a, is a sign of modesty. You need to be modest in your dressing. I understand what the man said. The man said, how will I find you attractive if you are wearing hijab? Yeah, sometimes... When it comes to having a suit, it might be kind, in my opinion, what I feel, it might be kind of difficult for you to get a suit because you are always covering up. But it depends on the kind of hijab you wear because there are different types. But still, it's, it's a sign of you know modesty, it's a sign of respect. Most people are not forced to wear it. Most people wear it because they believe they need to look decent and they are doing it for God. Because that was the question they asked. I said, 
who are you wearing the jar for? You are doing it for yourself, you are doing it for God. And that lady Khadija saying that the mother stopped her father from her wearing the jar because the mother told the father I don't want my child to be a slave. Even though some people were were fine in difficult situation, doesn't mean most people are being forced to wear the jab. Doesn't mean it's a sign of oppression. You know, she made mention of some people not wearing the hijab properly. When you don't wear the hijab properly, they'll, they'll punish you. Is that so? And um, is there a way you wear hijab? I believe as a Muslim, you should know how to wear your hijab. If you're a Muslim and you wear your hijab, how is it improper? Is it that she's not really a devoted Muslim or is she just wearing for the fun of it? Because I don't just get that part where she said people are always punished when they don't wear the hijab properly. I understand the you know the instances she made, the situation some people have have gone through. That doesn't mean you should generalize it and say it's a sign of oppression. Apart from religious wise, it's good to cover up. Yes, it's good. It's a sign of respect. When you cover up, you you will not attract unnecessary people that will come and harass you, that will come and boo you unnecessarily or do you know when you dress that they like said the way you dress is when people will address you. The other woman Khadija, it was as if you no know, maybe she has gone through some things for her to give those remarks. Because some of those remarks were hurtful. It was painful to hear. A job is this, a job is that. No, we should not do that. Well, regardless of that, that was a beautiful one. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.